Hello everyone, today we are in this very symbolic place here in Geneva and I'm very delighted to spend a moment with Danielle. Danielle, you are Head of Research for Interpeace and maybe you want to start by giving us a bit of background about Interpeace. Sure, thank you Catherine. Interpeace is an international peacebuilding organization that originally grew out of the UN, uh, does a lot of peacebuilding work throughout uh, Africa and the, and the Middle East, very much at the local level working on uh, really difficult to solve conflicts all throughout the world. And so you have a, a background of, around peace and we, we had a talk about peace bonds. Could you give us a bit of um, flesh about what is a peace bond and um, how should it work? How would it work? Sure. I mean, one thing that we know from uh, more than this 27 years of operating is that peace and prosperity do go hand in hand. And one of the challenges that we find in our work is how to finance it, how to finance the peace building work that's much needed. And at the same time, how can the private sector be more engaged in some of the world's most fragile and conflict affected places? Uh, because we do know that's where the great majority of the world's extreme poor live. And they are dependent on forms of investment that is actually not going to make the conflicts worse and benefit people in, in equal ways. So we've been looking at uh, trying to find new ways to do that. And peace bonds is just one way. Peace bonds is, uh, could be just like any type of other bond, but is a way of financing investment and development in fragile and conflict affected places in ways that uh, minimizes risks for investors, uh, is better for communities and uh, better for governments, hopefully. And have you, have you maybe an example or two about how you can create this environment? We, we've done a bit of feasibility work with uh, different sectors. We've looked uh, at energy, water, wash, food and agriculture. We think those are all sectors that are very interesting for potential peace bond issuance because there's a lot of issues related to conflict and violence in those sectors. And that if you can mitigate and control the risks related to conflict and violence, there's a lot of potential upside for peace bonds in those areas. We've got one example uh, that we are working on at the moment. It's a solar power plant in uh, Ghana that's delivering energy to Burkina Faso. And uh, one of the key things that we're trying to do in that project is really sensitize it to the local communities, enable the local communities to, to share the benefits and result in a, a win for the investors uh, because they get lower risk and also result in uh, a better outcome for communities who get low cost energy uh, in a way that's much more inclusive and really addressing their real needs. And, and how do you do that? Is it with engaging with local communities? Maybe can you give us a bit of, a, of, of an example of how is it in real life? Sure. So one of the key things we think for a peace bond would be the embedding of what we're calling peace enhancing mechanisms in the use of the proceeds. And what that would do is a range of peace building actions that would engage the communities in a much more participatory, uh, inclusive way to really understand their needs, to understand the, the conflict dynamics and to really look at benefit sharing mechanisms so people can much more inclusively benefit from the development uh, at hand. It's also about engaging with the authorities, with the government uh, in ways that is much more inclusive and that builds trust in the investment, which we hope can actually directly lower the risk of the project itself. So it's not just something that you do just for the peace benefit. Obviously, that's really critical, but it's also because of the improvements on the risk of the investment. And so we are talking here about also the SDG number 16. As we know, there are many other SDGs, a lot are about the environment. And in the recent years, we have been hearing a lot about greenwashing. So uh, according to you, what would be important so we avoid in some years uh, ending up talking about peace washing? Yeah, I mean, we've learned a lot from the experience of the green bond market. And one thing that we have seen is uh, the specter or the phenomenon of greenwashing. A lot of that we think is to do with the proliferation of standards. And one thing that we do want to do from the inception of the peace bond market is to really look at how principles, standards, guidance can be developed for the market, for the industry, for different issuers to really understand the standards that should guide uh, peace bond issuance. So this is a really crucial point because when we think about the green bonds, the first green bond was issued in 2007. Green bonds principle were first 
um, elaborated in 2014, so that's seven years later. So the idea with the Peace Bond is to start straight away with a framework. And do you feel that framework should be mandatory? I think one thing that's very interesting to note is if you look at the growth in the green bond market and sustainable bonds and, and social bonds, they've really exploded really in the last three to five years. And I think there's no coincidence why that's sort of linked to the presence of standards because that allows the market to have trust. So for that reason, we do think that for the market to grow, it is important from the inception to have uh, a set of standards. This is something that we are looking to engage many, many more actors on to really understand that question. There is going to be a very significant incentive, we hope, for investors to align with the peace bond standard because of the benefits vis-a-vis -vis the additionality, vis-a-vis -vis the risk reduction and the market premium, the reputational benefits we hope that uh, peace bond issuance uh, would confer. So I can, I can hear there's a lot of uh, things bubbling and I'm really looking forward to see hopefully soon the first ever peace bond. So thank you very much, Daniel. Thanks so much.